I think this is the earliest I've ever gotten up to drive this truck. And that is all right by me. So, we're working with 615 right now. I'm gonna try to get that raised up a little bit with this load. Flat steel, it got me up pretty decent amount last time I came out of here, so I'm hoping for it. I already got out, checked my light, checked my oil, checked my filter. I need to change my Dabco filter, and that's gonna suck, because I'm gonna get covered in diesel again. But we'll take care of that at our fuel stop in 312 miles with the total destination being 443 miles i'm probably going to end up taking my 30 minute reset at that fuel stop and i gotta tell you that 30 minute reset has got to be the most retarded thing they ever came up with when it came to hours of screwage they're not even hours of service anymore they're hours of screwage <laughs> you know this eight hour thing it's beyond retarded and useless yeah it screws me more than anything else it almost screwed me yesterday but I pushed the right edge off of that I even as much but anyway it is 203 in the morning and we're going to take off out of here which is uh, Montpelier Iowa I keep forgetting what state I'm in uh-huh Montpelier Iowa so we're gonna head down to uh, where did I say I was going? Kearney, 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 Missouri. And then we're gonna go back to uh, Emporia, Kansas. So we're gonna do that right now. <laughs> we're looking pretty good this AM. I am now in Kearney, Missouri. I got fuel. This 125 gallons worth. I have one hour and 44 minutes right now, but once this turns over to 30, I'll have five hours and 34. Perfect. That's what I need right there. Uh, taking my 30 minute here in Kearney because uh, 8.14 in the morning on a Thursday, Kansas City is going to be a mess. It's a big city. Any big city is going to be a mess. So. I figure I'll take my 30 minutes early, that way I don't end up getting stuck in traffic and having to stop at a rest area somewhere And after I get out of Kansas City, and who knows how long it's going to take. I know it's not going to be like yesterday where I just drove right through, straight up there <laughs> at like 6 in the morning when there was no traffic hardly at all. No, nah, this is, ta we're talking rush hour right now, so not even going to attempt it until I have the hours to do so and not worry about it so we have 131 miles to go until the drop and from there we're good to go so I figure with this 30 minute break I'll go ahead and have my Taco Bell that they have at this uh, Kearney Missouri pilot I like that I knew they had it I wanted it so I got it so we're good I'm gonna enjoy this and we're gonna go drop Oh, and I uh, lost a bungee off the back of my tarp. So unfortunately, a little bit of the way here, it was kind of getting a little flappy there. So, yeah. The back edge doesn't look all that great anymore, but it's not terrible. It'll still work, thankfully. It wasn't flapping around too long before I was able to get here and take care of that. So now it's got four bungees back there. It ain't coming off again. <laughs> I'll show that when I get stopped. At my drop! Okay. You know what? I stopped four times to rebungee this stupid thing. And it broke every single one of them. It broke all four of the bungees I had put on back here. And now, I'm supposed to untarp in this? <laughs> oh, this is going to be just freaking lovely. Absolutely. That ain't real pretty, is it? Thankfully, it's just the end. Frickin' A. This is going to be a disaster in the making. Well, by the grace of God, 
the wind died down enough that I can take care of everything without getting completely ticked off and killing myself in the process of trying to fold and wrap that tarp up. It actually went really, really well, considering. And I have only been here for about 30 minutes. Well, 45. I started about 45 minutes ago back here, so. You know, it really wasn't so bad. It wasn't this. <laughs> Flip it! Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> yep, just got the music going. I'm just, this guy's ahead of me. He'll get unloaded in dock eight before I do, and we'll see what happens from there. I only have the middle times left. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Well, it's probably not going to look too familiar from back here because I'm parked in uh, the check-in area, but uh, I am back in Hutchinson's, Kansas. Yep, I'm right back where I just was two days ago. Mm -hmm. Drop this, drop this last load in Emporia where I just was yesterday morning. <laughs> I'm making a gigantic loop-de-loop -loop here, but this one here. This salt load is going to Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City. So I gotta look at this to see how the heck I'm gonna get there. And if I have to actually get on the base. Oh man, I actually get to go on base. That is freaking cool right there. How about that? I like that. That's pretty neat. So yeah, anyway, this is pretty much the end of this day because that is literally all the time I have left. You have zero hours and 19 minutes of remaining drive time. Yeah, so, <laughs> so as soon as this ends, it's going to be the beginning of my 8 or 10 hour break. Probably 10 because I've used quite a bit today. Yeah, I've only got that much left on my 11. I've been driving since like 1 or 2 o'clock this morning, so there you go. Yeah, so, I'm obviously not getting a 34-hour reset this weekend, unless I take a good, uh, good weekend runner that's got short mileage or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm going to get this load, and then I'm going to hit the bed, probably. <laughs> The good news is, it's not as windy here as it was two days ago, even though the wind in Emporia was like trying to blow me off my feet and put a nice headwind right into the... Look at this. I bounced 110 miles and didn't gain a point. What the heck? <laughs> That's how bad the headwinds were. So, I don't know. I might just deal with videos for a while because I'm going to be waiting here for a load for a while, I'm sure. There's like seven trucks over here and however many in the docks over here and it took me three hours to get loaded two days ago so I'm not keeping my hopes up or anything but anyway I might work on videos some more and who knows if I do end up getting home which I don't think I will I might upload a couple of them because I have like five of them I have five of them ready to render and several more that need editing still so yeah. Okay, okay, so I know I already got the hard part out of the way. That's lifting the stupid tarps up onto the load. That's the hard part. Now I'm gonna show you how I actually tarp a load as best I can anyway with this angle. <laughs> yeah, you can't really see anything. Oh well. You can see enough. You know, the wind never rears its ugly head until I'm about to try to do something on video. Then it just makes itself clearly known that it's gonna make my life difficult. 
So here we go. I get my camera strap out of the door. Okay. A couple things I will say, and a couple things I will say I do not say. One, I do say the load will be secure and the tarp will be secure over it and the load will remain dry. I did not say it would look halfway decent. I also did not say to use my tarp jobs as an example in any way shape or form because I know they suck all right they get the job done and for me that is all that matters oh and it keeps the tarps in one piece too that helps generally well like I said on that last one I didn't do that tarp job if I had done that tarp job it would have been done a heck of a lot differently for one it would have been done like this rather than having tents coming down the front and back I don't do tent tarps unless I have to. Like that one load of uh, steel or the whatever, the suspended ceiling parts out of Chicago, that was a good tent tarp I did on that one. And I'm like recording right into the sun. That's not going to work very well. That was a good tent tarp, but that was very, very uh, odd circumstances. I don't usually do them, especially on loads like this where it's using a majority of the tarp. Nah, no point. So, this'll work. And that's all I claim to do, is make it work. And for God's sake, I need to figure out how the hell I keep losing this freaking mud flap. Seriously? That makes three. I've lost three mud flaps with this truck. Is that right? Yeah. One on that side, two on this side. And you know what? When they did my service, they replaced that mud flap and they took the one I bought. They never properly reimbursed me for that mud flap, so I should have gotten that back. But no, they probably threw it out. It's like crap. I could really use that now. Thank you very much. Anyway, 219 miles to go in the morning. I'm just doing computer crap back here for now. Oh, guys. Jeez, you always seem to get out of focus for no reason. I'm gonna leave the door windows open for a little longer because it is hot in here. Actually, I'm hot from working, that's all that is to it. Because it is 70 degrees. Okay, it is hot. <laughs> oh, how am I gonna survive summer? I'm not. Anyway, I'm out of here. Good night. <laughs>